This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ladies and gentlemen, that gentleman sipping on his coffee in California is a star of radio, television, movies, records. Records. But you don't have a you don't have a uh, what do they call it when you win all those three things? You know, oh yeah, the, when you win a, a, EGOT, Tony, a Grammy, an EGOT, an EGOT, an Emmy, an Academy Award. Yeah, yeah. I have yeah. nothing. Yeah, uh, yeah. But anyway, hmm. records. God, I feel like I was Sherman. But, uh, oh, anyway, you know, so, I I start a show. I start an interview and my phone that- decides to ring, and of course it's from Farmingdale, New York, which means it's, uh, you know, I have to turn what, off my. What, what does that mean? Because from the island, so who would be calling you? I don't know. I have to turn off my phone, okay, and then I have well, to. Well, interesting you're doing that because I, um, I have Do Not Disturb here on my iPad, but my house phone, yeah, might hasn't rung in two days, but I'm expecting a call from the exterminator. Oh. I got to talk to him. Yeah, one of the lovely problems of home ownership um <laughs> what you know what says one and there's another thing what, it, what it's like you, the golden gate bridge you know they finish painting it they gotta they start, gotta all, start over all over again, again. what what, right. what what the what the pests do you have that have to be exterminated my girlfriend no, okay <laughs> good night folks <laughs> I <still laughs> have it. I it. Yes. um you know what i have yeah. I, I had a couple of rats under the house so they it's a very exciting story but what's very <laughs> weird this house I, I think I've told you this before. I, I look. I don't really believe in hauntings and stuff, but you know, yeah. I've always felt there's so many shows on TV and there's so many hauntings. If, if one point, if one percent of them are real, it's like UFOs. Then they're out there. So yeah. this house, the original owner, yeah. had shot himself in the head in my bedroom, way before I had the house. <laughs> and some creepy stuff was going on in this house. And you know, my daughter and my wife uh, saw it more than I did because I was on the road, but. It was creepy stuff. And a lot of it could be written off to, you know, the dogs barking, nothing. Well, it could be, you know, mice or rats in the rafters. And then there's, you know, houses move and change, and whatever. But there was a lot of creepy stuff. So I think the ghost is long gone. But the other day I go in my bathroom and there's a million flies. It was like, what was that movie? Was it uh, Long Island? What was that house? The Amityville Horrors. The Amityville Horrors, yeah. Yeah, and then, but there was no way for them to get in the bathroom. And I was just killing them and killing them and killing them. I, I killed hundreds of flies. So maybe that has to do with the haunting. I, I don't know. Mm. So mm. But now they're coming for rats. Great story. I'm full of great, great stories. stories. Great stories. Uh, somebody killed themselves in your house before you bought it. Yeah, it's an odd story. Um, I, I also think they filmed gay porn here. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't do that anymore. Wait a minute. How do you, um, know, how do you know they filmed gay porn there? Were you watching a gay porn sometime? And I know saw- my house. Yes, I know. <laughs> because... Um, some neighbors uh, yeah. when we moved in and when I heard the story about the guy who killed himself which I'll tell you in a second yeah. said there'd be occasionally a film crew here and they never saw any women they saw like real buff looking guys I guess or something like that so they figured it was gay porn hmm. that they shot here but um, anyway so no, what happened was because I talked to my neighbor about this the guy that was living here and I still get his mail occasionally back when they built this house I don't know in the late 60s yeah. um there was a doctor that lived here and he had just, I think, lost, uh, broken up with his girlfriend or wife mm-hmm. and he had got laid off from his job at a hospital. So he was out of work. He, he didn't have a wife. He was very, very depressed and uh, he couldn't find a job, I guess. So he shot himself because the neighbor didn't know why the mail was uh, piling up. But he came and he found, he found him in the bedroom, uh, my bedroom now, mm-hmm. uh, with a gunshot to the head. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, his brother said he came to the house to you know, take care of everything. And on his message machine, there was a, a, a job, there was a call for the guy for, yeah. for a job. It was like a Twilight Zone episode. Right. So, I don't know. Yeah. That was a long time ago. It was way before there was somebody else. Now, who now my, que- my question to you is, when they sell a house and somebody right. killed themselves in it, they have to reveal that information. It's right? only five years. At least, at least in California, they only have to tell you something happened in five years, with the last five years. And this had happened a long time ago. 
Oh, okay. So nobody told us. Oh, so the guy did, the guy that had the house before you didn't kill himself. No, no. Was, oh. I think it was the original owner of the second one. Back in the, I think back in the 70s, maybe the early 80s. Yeah, oh, 70s, okay. All right. Yeah. okay. All, All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now you wanted to talk about this book I hear, right? What? No, I don't want to hear about their book. Well, why am I talking to you then? We just talked. Well, I mean, if we're friends and uh, we like to talk to each other, and I, I figured I'd just give you a call. In spite of the fact all these messages keep coming up on the screen, folks. I'm sorry about that, but I just fixed it. Are those from your imaginary viewers? For my imaginary viewers. You're right. They are imaginary viewers. Well, whatever you got to do. Though. Yeah, they're yeah. also my imaginary best friends. So That's anyway, right. Okay. Anyway, anyway, so um, um, uh, where were we? Oh yeah, your book. Your book. You take you take the lead. Yeah, you wanted to call me. Yeah, you don't want to talk to me unless you want to talk yeah. about the book. You don't want to just talk to your old pal Al, right? Well, what do you want to talk about? We already covered the dead guy. I'll talk about anything. Well, what about this book? You didn't tell well, me you were writing a book. Well, I think this is why I didn't tell you because I didn't write the book. It says on the cover. That I wrote the book. Okay, it, the your book name is, is on the cover as an author. It says by Bobby right. Slayton and I don't know Ta Tony Norman, Tall. who's a publisher in England, who just coincidentally flew in today. We're having dinner this evening. Mm -hmm. But um, um, the the guy that wrote the guy that put out the book, Tony Norman, has a um, an incredible, beautiful publishing company called Real Art Press. Yeah, um, they do some beautiful books. They did one big coffee table books. They did one on Led Zeppelin. I think he has one just came out about Queen and my friend John Kish who had, until he um, sold it to George Lucas, the biggest collection of black movie posters, you know, from the beginning of time, mm -hmm. you know, from Mantan Moreland and Lena Horne and oh, wow. all, all the way up. Wow. It's a complete collection. Yeah, everything. Really rare, rare, rare stuff. So they did a coffee table book. That's how I met this publisher. Anyway, uh, they, they did some really classy work. And he calls me up a few months ago and said, um, in conjunction with a gallery in Barcelona, they're doing a series of books about Jews. And one book is going to be a book on Jewish comedians. And it's not so much the history of comedy. It's a small book. And I didn't realize this till I, he only had so much room in the book. It's called The Small Book of Jewish Comedians. And so he shows me the list of some of the comedians. And I see on the list, Phyllis Diller, not Jewish. Robbie Williams, certainly not Jewish. Jonathan Winters. I go, don't you have a computer? Where? I, go, I think you need my help here. You don't have Shecky Green on here. Um, you know, he had a lot of the usual suspects. He had, uh, you know, Jackie Mason and, um, you know, Sid Caesar and Carl Reiner. Yeah. Even though they weren't stand up comics, Don Rickles. But there were a lot of comics he didn't have. And I said, why don't I help you with the list? I think they could be and considered. Then, I think they could be considered comedians, but not comics. There's a difference. Right. Well, it's, it's called the book on uh, comedians. Yeah. Um, I mean, he, he wanted. Um, Gilda Radner in there. She certainly was a sketch. She wasn't a stand-up. But, but she was like a comedian. She was a comedian. She she wasn't a comic. A comic stands up and right. tells jokes. A comedian right. can do skits right. and sketches. Can right. be. Well, improv. this is a book of comics and comedians. It's it's yeah. a combination of the two. Yeah. Um, but what he wanted was, and again, it was his book. He wanted four good jokes or four jokes for each of the comedians. I don't know why he picked four, but he wanted four. By the way, there's there's one in the mail um, coming to you. Really? Uh, huh? hey, do I have the ability to reject it if I don't want it? Uh, you could do whatever you want. You can regift, <laughs> although I signed it to you. So if you can find somebody named Alex, you know, maybe one of the people oh, from Farmingdale. I wish, I, you, I wish you hadn't signed it to me. I'll tell you why. I found out by watching Pawn Stars that if you have a, 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 a autograph, Right. And it has two so-and-so. It's less valuable right. than if it's just the autograph. Well, I don't know how valuable this is with or without the autograph. So, um, anyway, so, you know, so I'm getting it. Well, so I'll put can... it right next to my autograph of uh, John Lennon. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah. he wanted four jokes for each comedian. And there were a lot of comedians in that book that had to be in there that weren't known as joke guys. You know, there was Steve Landisberg, mm -hmm. who I actually had to, you know, you can Google and go on the internet and find jokes from almost everybody. But, you know, a lot of them don't play in print. A lot of the quotes are not necessarily comedic quotes. It's sometimes a comic talking about politics or show business. He wanted jokes. So like one guy that was kind of hard to find was Jerry Lewis, because Jerry Lewis no, no, no. had to be in there. Whether you're a Jerry Lewis fan yeah, or not. Yeah, but, but, there are no, but there are no, I can't think of a joke Jerry Lewis told. Well, you know what? He did play Las Vegas a lot, so he would do jokes. Oh, he really? Would say, okay. Well, it's in the book. There's a few things, you know. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't think this joke is in the definition of a wrench, where Jewish cowboys go. 
a wrench. You know, yeah. <laughs> uh, but there were a lot of comics. Like, for example, there was, um, you know, he only had so much room yeah. for so many comics. And for some reason, this wasn't my idea. He had two pages on Gary Shamley, who I love, two pages yeah. on Henny Youngman, and two pages on Rodney Dangerfield. And I said, well, if you would have just had one in there, we could have got more guys in there like Robert Schimmel, uh, Bob Saget, John Lovitz. There was, there was a lot of people. Um, yeah. Although there's another example. I looked up Bob Saget, one of my, a good friend, one of my favorite comics, but he wasn't a joke guy. Uh, Myron Cohen's not in there because he told stories. Steve Landisberg was hard to find. Well, Bob Saget, a, Bob, Saget did, Bob Saget did stand up. No, he don't. He did stand up, but he, he, you know I couldn't find a lot of his joke jokes. In other words, it weren't like a line. My wife's so a fat line, that a, right. now Henny Youngman, you had no problem. <laughs> no, there was no problem. I mean, just, he, yeah. he's and, just and, one and, uh, joke after and another. And Rodney Dangerfield, there's no problem. Yeah. And I really wanted David Tell in there, even though a lot of people don't know him. He's one of my generation. I, he's he's a, has great lines, and he's in there. Gilbert Godfrey's in there. So, you know, I was trying to pick guys that, you know, we said, well, if I put this person in, I have to take out that person. And I said, well, you can take out Gene Wilder, you know, even though I was married to Gilda Radner. He was a comedic actor. He wasn't a comedian or a comic. Yeah. Um, I had Ed Wynn in there because Ed Wynn, you know, started out in vaudeville and did. Oh did yeah, comedy. and Ed, Ed Wynn had one-liners. Yeah, but it was yeah. hard to even find one-liners yeah. for him. Um, I wish that I would have. Yeah, I put in Brad Garrett, of course, Jerry Seinfeld. How, I, 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 audience, raise your hand. How many people know who Ed Wynn was? You know, time passes and these comedians get forgotten, and especially current generations who never lived in those times don't even know who Ed Wynn is. People forgot me the day after I did Norm Crosby's comedy shop in 1979. So I, I know how we feel. Um, you know, every time I think of Ed Wynn, I just get that Twilight Zone episode with a pitch for the angels. But, yeah. you know, he goes way back. And um, He was also uh, in, uh, what was the one about the uh, Jewish girl in the attic? Uh, um, oh, Anne Frank? Anne Frank. <laughs> the Diary of Anne Frank. I think he was in that. Oh, was he? Yeah, played like an uh, uncle or something. Oh, I don't remember. But, you know, so anyway, there were a lot of people in there that... Um, you know, then that when I when I proofread the book, and I didn't really proofread it, but anyway, there's a big introduction by me. So the book originally said, and I made no money off the book, so there's no reason to talk to you really about this. But uh, the it, it, the original cover of the book was um, edited by Tony Norman, the publisher, mm -hmm. with uh, it's an introduction by Bobby Slayton. But I guess Tony was being very magnanimous and decided I did so much work on the book, he would put me down also as the author. So there's why I never told you about my book. Okay, because okay. it really isn't your book, but you researched it. It's what you did. I did the research on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I wish there was a few more comics that I would have gotten in there. Like I said, I forgot. I don't know how I forgot because there's a good friend of mine. We did shows together. You know, Robert Schimmel. I mean, Lewis Black is in there. Buddy Hackett's in there. There's, you know, I, I'd say there's a good 10 comics, you know, that, but again, it's not a comprehensive encyclopedia of, of, of like jokes. How, how, many, how many comics are in there? I don't, that's a good question. I don't even know. Yeah. Um, maybe 30, 40. Yeah. Um, maybe. Uh, you know what? I get the book in front of me. I mean, I Gilbert Gottfried has to be in there because he's as Jewish a comedian as I've ever met. You know? Right. Well, you know what? But it's interesting because I would look at it like, like I like it went online, a, a, a list of Jewish comedians. And there were people that, you know, like I said, Robert Schimmel wasn't on there. Andrew Dice Clay wasn't on. He's not in the book. I totally forgot about him. But uh, like yeah, I said, nice not everybody could fit in that book. I thought also... He had Joan Rivers um, in there, of course. I said, you know, you should also have, because she was sort of like, in the 1960s, one of the first women comics, along with Joan, was Tony Fields. Yeah. She was a groundbreaking comic. I mean, she was a little corny and a little borscht belty, but she was overweight, and she made fun of herself, and she was on Ed Sullivan all the time. So she had to be in there, you know? Yeah. Today, um, nobody knows who Tony Fields is. Today, no. nobody. But, but no. back then... Anybody who watched Ed Sullivan knew who Tony Fields was. And she was married to Ed Wynn. What a coincidence. No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, but that's, so that's the story. It's, a, it's just like a nice little coffee table book. You know, Rickles, of course, is in there. And, um, um, you know, I didn't pick all the jokes. Tony had done some of the research and had some of them. So I was just kind of, you know, like, like Brad Garrett's in there. Brad Garrett's a very funny guy, but he never let a one liner. So I had to really search for one-liners for some of these people. Um, and he had put Gilda Radner in there, but he had quoted all the Rosanna Downer, whatever her name was. Those are yeah. the Rosanna Downer jokes. He also put Fran Lebowitz in there, who he wanted in there, who, by the way, had some very, very funny lines, but certainly isn't a comic or a, a comedian. No, she Fran is a writer yeah. and a satirist. 
a speaker yeah. and a writer. She's she's not a comic, but he wanted her in you there. Know, so, you know, like said, actually, what, what's the title of the book? A Small Book uh, of Jewish Comedians. It probably should have been Jewish Comedians. It probably should have been Funny Jewish People. Because when you do Fran Lebowitz, she deserves to be in a book on funny Jewish people. But right. comics, I, I, comedians, I, I don't know. You know, it's, it's a real... I mean, and I do, I watch her, and every time she's in an interview, I laugh. Oh, she's very, very funny. And then you saw that thing she did, remember, uh, what is it, Martin Scorsese thing? Remember what it was yeah, they did, it, like a five, like, five-parter or something like that. Yeah, and, yeah. and was, you saw it, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. It was brilliant, and Scorsese didn't stop laughing, and I, I thought it was so entertaining. I she's swear so I swear that I know her from somewhere. That I, in, in my career, I have come across her or been well, in a probably, room with I mean, her. You live in New York. She's a real New York animal. You, yeah, know, yeah. you probably saw her in a restaurant or something. This she may have been when I was that. first here in New York. That I, I I came into contact with Fran Lebowitz, but I don't remember. I don't remember. No. Of course, well, I don't remember a lot of things. Remember. I don't a lot of We're things. We're getting old. No, well, of course. We're getting old, Alex. We don't remember a lot of things. I don't. I, but, I don't um, remember um, what I had for lunch five minutes ago. You know. Right. So. Um, and Lane Boozler, I had to put in there. You know, and as I was going through the, uh, as I kept sending Tony a list, I went, wait, one more, one more, one more, and he goes, well, if I put that person in, I have to drop this person, because the book only had so many pages. I, I didn't realize when you write a book, unless you go to a you know, a larger grid and add more pages and add more bigger. Cost you more money. It, it's a much more expensive book. So you had a certain amount of pages that I had to work with, and you know, I couldn't get everybody in there. You know, I mean, we could have done a whole book just on Catskill comedians. This could have been. This, well represented. If you think about it, this could have been a, a coffee table book. You know, with pictures of all the people and, you know, the little biography. Well, it is a coffee inside. table book, and if you have a very small coffee table, yeah. it's perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. Because um, it's a small book of Jewish comedians. And uh, yeah, like that. Yeah. Well, that, that's very good, Bobby. You know. Uh, uh, but, you know, it's interesting, the, the ones you came up with, because you and I, uh, I'm older than you are, but you and I come in a time frame where we remember a lot of comedians who have since been forgotten completely. You know, um, Toady Fields I'm was trying. a perfect example of that. Who is? Toady Fields. Oh, Tony Fields, yeah. yeah. Well, there's other guys, too, that so many people don't know that are very famous. I mean, I, I think almost, yeah, Positive Red Buttons is in there. Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, Mort Sol and Lenny Bruce are in there, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but you'll see the book. It's a, yeah, he also had Alan Sherman in there. And Alan Sherman, I guess, was a comedian, but he was more of like, like Tom Lehrer. He was a singing, what do you call him? He, he was a the, the songs, yeah, yeah, huh? Parodies, yeah. parodies. Yeah. And, yeah. But he's in there. Um, um but if we would have called it funny Jewish people, you still wouldn't have been in there, Alex. So, you know, yeah, I, I don't I, I never consider myself funny. Well, I, you're not alone in that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can always go to you to have my self-esteem yeah. killed in a second. Well, you're like Bud Abbott. A lot of people didn't think he was funny, but he was really the funnier of the two. If you want to say and analyze it. Well, you know? actually, people don't understand this. And I and I and I it always. Oops. I always bring this up that uh, this, when people see a team, the straight man is usually the better of the two because right. he has to set up the funny one. Right. And so Bud Abbott had to have spot on timing. Oh, he's magnificent. You don't really realize Costello didn't kid. need to have the timing. Right. You know, all he needed right. to do was go. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Well, they were both very That's funny. My impression. Beautiful That's my impression of... Lou Costello scene, Frankenstein's monster. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. my, my favorite movie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was <laughs> yeah. It's my favorite movie, and it's, it's always funny. And when I was a kid growing up, I mean, it was so. Well, there was a Quentin Tarantino interview a year or two ago. I mean, you talk about he, a walking he, encyclopedia. I think he said that was one film. of his favorite films. One of his favorite films of all time, because as a kid, well, you realize it now. You know, when they're blending horror with comedy, I mean, people have, of course, done that since, you know, even right. if you look at the West Scream or whatever, there's a million movies where they put a little comedy in there. But that was really when the monsters all and played it straight. And it was a magnificent film. When you're a little kid, it's scary and funny. Yeah. You know, and, it's, and that was the only movie I could think of, except maybe for March of the Woods of Soldiers or Wizard of Oz. But that was funny and scary. I, so just, I that, uh, when I was a kid, that was one of my favorite films. Oh my God! Okay, uh, and um, you know I liked Abbott and Costello when I was a kid. When I grew up, right. 
uh, I became more sophisticated and they weren't as funny yeah. to me anymore. Yeah, I, I, I find some of their stuff very funny, but I don't really yeah. watch them like I used I'll to. I'll tell you I who I never, I wonder if these guys made your book. Uh, did the Marx Brothers make your book? Well, that's what's interesting. Graf shows in there, of course. But, you know, I said you you have to put the Marx Brothers in and you really need to put the Three Stooges in. That's what the I three was going to Yeah. And you need to put the Ritz Brothers, who nobody knows. Right. But So what Tony did, and it was brilliant, I thought, was it op- the book opens up. Yeah, like I said, you'll get a copy of the next week or two. There's a picture of the Marx Brothers, the three Marx Brothers. Mm-hmm. I know mean, there was more. You know, want to go if you put Zeppo and Gummo. But... Um, so there, there, there were actually the Marx the, brothers. There were the five Marx brothers, actually. Right, right. There's that Gummo, yeah. yeah. So there was um, 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 there was the Ritz brothers, the Marx brothers, the Three Stooges, and then my friend John Kish, who's a photographer who also wrote that book, of, you know, compiled that book of black movie posters, has a nice shot of three of me. Um, so the three Bobby Slaytons, and, and before my introduction. Wow. Um, so yeah, it was pretty very well done. But again, if you're going to quote people, what are you going to put for the Three Stooges? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they didn't say anything that could be. <laughs> there were no one-liners, but that's great that you opened the book with you know three of those. Well, these um, were these were people that even though they weren't stand-up comedians, in other words, there was were one guy getting on stage. Right. Okay. Uh, they were uh, um, definitely uh, comedians. I mean, they were, they were there was no they did their act in vaudeville. They did their act right. on stages, you know, right. so th- that qualifies them for this. Book. Well, what's interesting, too, is the picture of the Marx Brothers, Ritz Brothers, and the Stooges, they were all brothers. I mean, they, they, I think the picture doesn't have Curl. Uh, uh, no, Larry Fine, of course, wasn't uh, a yeah. brother. Yeah. But they have Shemp, and um, uh, I think the picture is Shemp, not Curly, but whatever. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, stooges, I'll, tell you, I'll, tell you, uh, I'll tell you something. Um, it, it, I was going to just say, I just thought of one. Uh, how about did... Burns and Allen, but you couldn't do Allen. You had to do Burns. No, yeah, I, I George Burns. I pretty sure is in there. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm almost positive George Burns is in there. Yeah. Um, how about again, how, how about Nichols and May? Were they Jewish? Yeah. No. 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 I looked. Really? No. no. Right. Oh. Woody Allen's in there. Um, of course, he had to be. You in know, there. Carl Reiner's in there. You know, I mean, it's it's a great book. Um, but if you see, you look at this, like I said, there's a couple of dozen. Actually, I think you comments. probably could have saved money if you had just done a book on Gentile comedians. Right. <laughs> right. Or, you know, well, because, well, you could have done black comedians. There's well, it seems. Why do you think it is that, that Jews were drawn to comedy as you know a profession? As a profession. I don't know. I mean, they were. I don't know why. Is it the same I, I reason don't. why blacks are, are drawn towards basketball, for instance? That it was the one avenue open to them to make money. Right. Well, that's probably why Jews did it. And then, you know, black people as well, you know, mm-hmm. when you're brought up in poverty, you know. Right. I think this has nothing to do with anything. But John Stewart, who's in the book, always had one of my favorite lines. Um, and I, I don't want to misquote the joke, but... Uh, um, how similar blacks and Jews are, you know, black people have the blues, the Jews complain. It's the same thing. We just never thought about putting it to music. Yeah, exactly. And that to me is one of the great lines of all time. Yeah. Anyway, John's in there. And um, like I said, Louis Black is in there. My contemporaries. I couldn't get them all in there. A lot of people, I didn't get Carol Leifer in there. A lot of people don't know Carol, but, but a brilliant Carol. Well, Carol career. Leifer, if you, if you watch credits on TV shows, She's like, for instance, an executive producer on Be Positive now on CBS. She does a lot of stuff for Chuck Lorre. She was a kind of a producer and writer at uh, Seinfeld. And she did the first season or two, a couple of, well, she did a bunch of seasons, A Curb Your Enthusiasm. When I did Curb last year, and Larry Davis in the book, of course, Richard yeah. Lewis is in the book. Yeah. I couldn't get Jeff Garland in the book. Yeah, like I said, you know, if you really wanted a comprehensive encyclopedia of comedy, there could have been another. You're not going to be the favorite of a lot of comedians out there because you're going to go out to some gig and they'll say, why wasn't I in the book? Well, I'm not really yeah. going out to any gigs anymore. I'm pretty yeah. much retired, so I don't really give a shit. Can you still do your act, do you think? Or do you, would you have to go out and work a couple of I gigs? I did it last week at the Brea Improv. You know, I had 100 people came out. But a lot of them came to see me. You know, because I asked, Bubbles, I asked Bubbles this question, you know, um, about... Uh, being able to do your act after a long time and not doing it, he said the first couple of gigs were hell for him. You know, hey, every gig I've ever seen him do has been hell <laughs> <laughs> for everybody. Um, no, I, like I said, I did it last. Is week. Bubbles uh, in the book? Wait a minute, Bubbles is Bubbles isn't Jewish. He's not Jewish. Yeah. 
No, and, it's, and Feldman's not in the book. It's only people who are, I, I had to really pick and choose and what with the most famous or the most important. And like, like you said, people don't know Ed Wynn or Tony Fields or at least a dozen of the people are in that book. Um, yeah. Um, I put Jack, is Jack Carter, Jack Carter, I think, is in the book. And, um, you know, um, I don't know. I, I, don't, I could get, get a copy of the book. I, 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 I'm looking forward to it, actually. Phil Silver's in the book. And he didn't have a lot of jokes, but I love Phil Silver's. Great oh, comedic yeah. uh, actor, you know. Well, again, he and worked. Uh, didn't he, didn't he, up as well. he did, he did vaudeville. Uh, he did vaudeville. I, vaudeville, I think, went to the Catskills. So there were a lot of those guys that, um, you know, Sid Caesar didn't have a lot of one-liners. In fact, didn't, but didn't course, Silver's you know, do burlesque as well? I think so. Yeah. You know, I, there was I, a difference I, you know, between burlesque and uh, vaudeville. Vaudeville, you had a variety of acts. You know, you come right. on after a juggler. Right. Uh, in burlesque, there were these skits between the women taking their clothes off. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, or dance or whatever they were doing. But, um, yeah, like I said, there's a lot of people that certainly didn't get in there. Um, yeah. You know, like I said, if we did just on the cat skills, I picked a nice group of people to represent that era. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, whoever I thought I could remember who was important. And I, like I said, I didn't put Myron Cohen in there because I couldn't find any jokes for him. I barely found him for Steve Landisberg. I had to sit and watch the Griffin show. I never so, found Myron Cohn funny. I, I didn't either, but he was before my time. So You know I, what he was? It was like, uh, it was always kind of like, you know, here's what's funny about Jewish people. You right. know? And it was just, it, it just hit me wrong. I just didn't feel comfortable with his comedy. Right. Right. I felt yeah, it was right. kind of being what, what we call a Shonda for the Goyim. You know? Right. There you go. Yeah. You know, my first manager, Jackie Cahane, who opened for Elvis, um, along with Sammy Shore, who yeah. opened for Elvis. They're not in the book. I couldn't fit them in there, but they're in my intro introduction. I mentioned them. You know, Norm Crosby, I think, is in the book. He put me on my first TV show back in the 70s. So that's the story, you know? Wow. So yeah. it's called The Small Book of Jewish Comedians. And, uh, the only paycheck I'm getting for that is the publisher's buying me dinner tonight at a very nice uh, West Hollywood restaurant. Okay. And, um, and now I have Christmas gifts to send out. My handwriting is so abominable. I used to have really nice handwriting. You know something? I, I can't stamp. even sign my signature anymore. I can't sign it anymore. I go, Bennett. This is Bennett right. Schwarzman. Bennett, G. I can get those out, kind of. And then I go to right. S-E-H-W-A-R-Z, and by the end of it, it's just like this straight line. Yeah, well, I signed yeah. them. It's like it looks like a lie detector test. But um, I wonder you know, I why. I wonder people. why you lose. Like when you're a kid, you 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 write perfectly. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? I think you. I don't know. Who knows? My girlfriend's mother has a. She's like in her seventies, late seventies. Beautiful handwriting. And my girlfriend's in her fifties. Beautiful handwriting. So I think it's different for every person. So what I did was. I just made up a stamp. They gave me a couple of cases of books. I'm sending them out, and I stamped the book with Merry Christmas and a Happy Jew Year. So I had a stamp made up for that, so I didn't have to write it. Oh. <laughs> the lazy man's way to spend Christmas. Yeah. And Merry Christmas and Happy Jew Year. All right? Yeah. So we done? I got to go back to work. I'm working okay, on well, we'll, we'll, let, we'll let you go this time, but I want to talk to you again really soon because I got a whole bunch of things I want to ask you. Yeah. All right. Well, as soon as the somebody kills himself in my house again. Or no. I find out, you know, more, when it gets wanted again, I'll call you. I'm threatening. You think to ask me? I don't know what. You, what do you think you possibly have to ask me? You haven't asked me before, but okay. Well, I'm but I'm, what I was going to ask you today was when I thought about your life. We're going over here, but when we were were talking about your life, uh, I wanted to bring up the fact that you probably. Ladies and gentlemen, that gentleman sipping on his coffee in California is a star of radio, television, movies, records. Records. But you don't have a, you don't have. Look, if I, look, if I had to go, if I was on the road somewhere and I was sitting in the bar and Taylor Swift came up to me and said, Bobby Slayton, I'm your biggest fan. I have to sleep with you. Yeah, I'd have to do it. And I would, I don't think I'd tell my girlfriend, but, but you see, I'd feel so guilty about that, that I'd be nicer to my girlfriend. Well, if I didn't fuck Taylor Swift, then I'd go back and want to strangle my girlfriend because I had a great opportunity. Either way, it's a lose-lose I don't know who's It's not going to happen. I don't know whose so, joke you know, this it, it was. was. Good. I don't know whose joke this was, but my wife and I have a deal. We have a kind of our uh, get-out-of-jail-free list. 
and she had to name a guy that she wanted to have sex with, and I named a, a woman, then I could name a woman that I wanted to have sex with, and uh, and we could have it, and it would be okay. And so she picked, uh, and there was some I don't know George Clooney, and uh, so I picked the babysitter. <laughs> I knew who jump that is? That's very funny. I don't know whose joke it is. Anyway, hey, listen, let's do this again in a couple of weeks. I love talking to you. you uh, well, know. you know what? When you get the book, you can call. Uh, there's not really anything to talk okay, about. Okay, I'll call you in a couple. Of, I'll uh, give talk. you a thing. A couple of weeks, we'll do this again, and I'll have, right. we'll have looked at the book, and I can tell you how much I love it. By the way, I, I, I you know when you called me the first few times to do this. I, I told you, I had a doctor appointment. I got exterminated coming. I'm, I'm doing it. Usually I have nothing to do. Nothing that, you know, maybe plant a few plants or eat breakfast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait. Well, I just figured you'd had a real busy life, and it's gone yeah. from playing gigs to getting exterminators to come over and kill rats. It's fine. I love yeah. this. Working out, hanging out. I don't want to ever do anything again. I've done enough. St stick around after we're through here, Bobby. That's Bobby Slayton, ladies and gentlemen. He's appearing right. absolutely nowhere. All right, I gotta go. I'm hungry. I gotta go make breakfast. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its seventh year, talk like you've never heard it before. And uh, that was Bobby. Yes, sir. That was Bobby Slayton. Oh boy. Oh boy. We're we're a little out of sync again. I I never can figure this one out because I'm not out of sync. Oh well. Anyway, I give up on it. I give up on the whole, the whole deal with the technology and the whole thing. I've uh, I've spent my life in the middle of technology, and I give up on it now. See, if I go over to the Zoom panel, uh, if I go over here, which would be a slightly different thing, you'll see that I'm in sync. I guess, yeah, I'm more in sync than I was the other way. Anyway, I don't know. I give up. Anyway, there's only one person waiting to come on here. And if this is all we got, uh, while I like him a lot, uh, but if it's all we got, then I'm going to sign off early tonight. Now, well, here comes Jeff Stein. Okay, let me see. Let's, uh, it's only me. Hmm? Yeah, I don't know. Am I, I'm in sync now. Yeah, I'm in sync. Yeah. You're in sync. Yeah. Anyway, uh, no. What happened? I never can quite figure it out. Something happens here with the with the with the video that when I when for before the show, I, it's all in sync and everything like that. And then when I go on and then I do, I even just have the zoom on, it like screws the whole thing up. So I, I don't know what the problem is, and uh, I don't know where, how I'm going to solve this problem. So what the hell? Hello, everybody. How are you tonight? Uh, yeah, I am. Um, um, I, by the way, during that interview with Bobby, I hit something by accident. I don't know what. I was it was this wire, and I picked this wire up, oh, and it's like not even attached to anything. And for some reason, I must have hit some other thing here or something, and it uh, it uh, it took Bobby's interview off. So I then had to go back to start Bobby's interview and then move to the place where we were. So if that's what you saw. That's what you saw. It was a lot in the last two minutes of the interview, so no big deal, okay? Uh, but I, I thought I would just uh, uh, mention that. Also, I think if you want to see it, I'm probably going to post it all by itself at some point here. And you know what I also good. didn't do because I was all panicked about everything? I didn't turn my lights on. So now you can all see me, and I look really good, okay? Anyway. Um, and so, uh, how are you guys doing? Anything special going on? Okay. Um, what? Yeah. I just love Bobby. He was great. Oh, Bobby's, yeah. Bobby's terrific. Bobby's the best. Yeah, and also it's just an interesting area because I'm like one of those people who know a little bit more than than yeah. most people. I, uh, I I can't remember it, but I used to go to the Bush Belt mm -hmm. when I was a kid. Yeah, Tyson's Acosta, uh, who is a the the only guy in our chat room tonight. Well, no, now there are two. All right. Uh, uh, so anyway, um, he writes uh, that the greatest Bud Abbott was the greatest straight man who ever lived. 
Yeah, man. Uh, and I'm sorry, Tysons, but you're wrong. Yeah. The greatest straight man, and it's acknowledged by most everybody in comedy, was George Burns. Um, he was the perfect straight man. And that's all he was with Gracie, uh, was a straight man. Yeah. So Tysons, you're wrong. And then somebody said, along, and then he said, along with Margaret Dumont, she really wasn't a uh, straight man or straight woman. She was just simply the butt of jokes, Tysons. So you're wrong on two counts tonight, Tysons. So I just thought I'd, I'd mention that. Since you never call the show, and I can't tell you this directly. Is anybody else going to call tonight? Is this it? Is this what it's all about? Yeah. Last it. night when Phil was on, you had a lot of people. I was busy, and I watched the show, and I'm, boy, I'm glad I didn't come on it. Boy, what a pain in the ass he's becoming. Well, I mean, he, he just takes the opposite of everything. He's uh, I'm, he, I'm just kidding. No, you, you shouldn't be kidding. He's negative, man. It's like if if you if, if the right is this way, the left is this way, then he's going to take the exact opposite position. Only with politics, though. Huh? Only with politics. Yeah, but right? that's but that's but that's everything here. Yeah, and guns, know. come on. You know, I mean, he he he's, he's wrong on just about everything. Yeah. You know, um, and then he sent but, me a thing today. Uh, the discussion about what was going on with that thing in Kenosha, Wisconsin. And, yeah. and uh, he sent me a thing, uh, a, a video from the, uh, I don't know, some insurance company that insures people who have guns. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and USCCA? Yeah, USCCA. And, and uh, uh, their take on it. And I'm going, I don't. Of course they're going to not have the take that you're going to, it's going to justify anything Phil has to say, you know. Don't don't send me stuff like that. Otherwise, I'll send you endless clips from MSNBC till you can't stand it any longer, Phil. You know. Mm. So there you go. Okay. Well, anyway, listen. If by uh, by uh, the thirty minute point on the show, what's yeah. that? What's that? Did you see that, Edwin? Yeah. Mm hmm. The perfect fool, they used to call him. Yeah. I thought that was your high school picture. No. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. If I don't get uh, a, a few more people here by, by 1130, I'm going to call the show short. So I'll just let you know that right now. Is Jack still in the hospital? No, Jack is, is out of the hospital and will be doing a show tonight. Terrific. Yeah. You know, I always have a problem to get... To get in on his show. Well, you have to use Skype. I do. Do you know Skype? Do you know how to use Skype? Yeah. It's simple. Really. I mean, it's not something that I'm favorite about, but I got it on. Well, Zoom is, is probably the easiest because all you have to do is click on a link and you're there. You know, where with Skype, you got to type in the, the, uh, the, th the thing, the name. I think we use GabNet Live for his show. And uh, that gets you on to uh, Skype, uh, calling the Skype number. But first, you got to have Skype installed, and you know all of that. So yeah, maybe that's I don't know, sure. um, but yeah. you know, it, it, it's uh, very dis uh, uh, disturbing to me that we're not getting any callers. It really is, and I don't know why. And uh, I, I just, you know, I mean, I'm beginning to wonder if I should just go down to one night a week this yeah uh you know and and um do my monday show which i i absolutely love uh and uh, uh this week was an exceptionally good show if you haven't heard it go back and listen to it folks but you know and then there's nobody watching either so what did i what, what where did what happened here did the oh. show suddenly get terrible you know uh mm. but uh it's hard for me to, what it's hard for me to tell because I like to be on it. I know you like to be on it. And, and yeah. the reason I keep doing it is for the people who call regularly, but we haven't even got them tonight at all. You know? Um, you know Charlie's out with baseball all the time. And, uh, you know, if we talk about the regulars, Tony's not here. Although, you know. Uh, well, I noticed some uh, football games on. 
I don't watch them, but a, a lot of people watch them. And yeah, but is there fo- they make DVRs for? Yeah, is there, there is there a football or, game tonight? Later. Is there a big? Yeah. Is there a big football game tonight? I don't know. My brother-in-law is a big fan, and he's he's been here screaming, and he's hanging out here. Oh, so. I mean, they they have football tonight. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't think my audience is big on football. <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? I thought Tony was going to be here, right? <laughs> well, you know, I mean. Uh, <laughs> Yes, it just this is this is the worst it's ever been tonight. I'm not saying uh, you guys are the worst. I'm saying this is the worst so far as attendance is concerned you know. uh, that we've uh, that we've had. Uh, yeah, I think in the history of the show. Really? Yeah, yeah. <sighs> you know, and uh, I, um, I I just don't know what what's gone wrong here. I mean, the number of people that watch it has gone down. I mean. Um, it's almost as though I maybe it's just the whole uh, podcast internet thing, because I think maybe people are are tired of it. I'll tell you, I I I used to love the idea of the internet, and I used to love the idea of being able to broadcast on the internet because I always felt that that broadcasting was uh, the, the the broadcast licenses were owned by big companies. And if you didn't get a job with one of those big companies, you didn't have a radio program. Mm. And when the internet came along, I saw something that I always wanted to see happen, and that was the democratizing of, of broadcasting. Yeah, it destroyed uh, it. Yeah, a, demo- a democratizing of broadcasting. And I figured if it came along, then everybody would be able to do a show. And people who want to do radio programs would be able to do radio programs or what we now call podcasting. And it would all be wonderful. But what happened instead was that once it became popular, uh, the big companies got involved. And now they're the ones that have the biggest podcast because they spend all this money advertising their podcasts. On, like, for instance, CBS has a whole bunch of podcasts. So they go on CBS and advertise their podcasts. And so people like me, you know, we're being shunted to the side because of this... Uh, undemocratizing of, of, uh, of uh, uh, the internet. Uh, podcasting is, is, I think, a terrible, terrible thing. And I think what it's done is it's allowed a lot of uh, people, uh, a lot of the companies to come in, take advantage of it, and push the little guys out. So the Latin Grammys are on in Las Vegas. That's where everybody's at. That's where everybody, our entire audience is. Yeah, yeah. At the Latin well, I think one of, the, one of the things that maybe is necessary these days is to advertise mm-hmm. on what, you do, what you're doing. Yeah, but I can't advertise. I don't have the money to advertise. You know, hi, Kevin. You thanks, for, thanks for saving my ass. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't have the money to advertise this. No, by the Internet you can, can't you? What do you mean? How? you got to pay what for is- it. You see, you can send uh, an email to uh, to a hundred people. I'm going to send an email to a hundred people at the same time. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, but what's that going to do? I'm going to get I'm going to get a hundred people. I don't know. No, I'll I probably get so. one person out of those hundred. You know, I mean, if there was a way, for instance, on Facebook that I could send a message to all my Facebook viewers, mm-hmm. listeners, you know, p- people. All the 5,000 that are, are registered at uh, Alex Bennett's uh, uh, Facebook page. Uh, <laughs> maybe I could, I could generate callers and generate whatever, but you can't do that. You can maybe do 10 at a time, you know, and it's, it's pain in the ass. It's an mm. absolute pain in the ass. So, I mean, but what I'm saying is, is that we, I look forward to the democratization of, 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 communication and that everybody would be able to communicate with everybody else and do programs and and do amazing things and all they're doing i mean if you look at the most popular podcasts, what are they kevin do you know what they are i'm sorry i got a text what were, what were you talking about i'm sorry I, i'm talking about <laughs> about podcasts and then i asked the question what is the most common type of podcast right now jesus there's what's common Probably makeup. 
<laughs> no, uh, you know what it is? It's those damn mystery things where people tell stories about murders and, you know. Really? Yes, yes. Uh, <clears throat> you know, and Yeah, I had no clue. I mean, there's so many different ones out there. It's, yeah. it's hard to tell. I mean, but I, I can, don't yeah. listen to a whole lot of them. I listen to some sports podcasts and... And things like that, but you know, I I don't not really. This is probably one of the only ones I listen to. Yeah. Well, I didn't think. By the way, you should take your background off uh, because you're disappearing. Your head disappears. You're talking about me. Yeah, yeah. Because you're not lit well there. Sorry. So, yeah. I um, thought I would try something new. Yeah. Well, what you're gonna you're gonna do? Put New York in the background? What'd you do that for? <laughs> I like that's, the that's, that's my deal. You don't get to do that. Okay, okay. Yeah. But mine was during daytime. Yours is at nighttime. Oh, I see. Okay. Anyway, I'm looking about... online to see if you can start. You got to, on Facebook, you got to start a group chat. Don't ask me what that is. In order to send all your people a message at the same time. I don't know. And how do I start a group chat? And maybe somebody on the show that's listening can do that. Yeah, you I mean, can you can Google it. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know much about Facebook. Hmm. Uh, didn't uh, uh, Forbin Colossus says didn't YouTube lower the pay amounts to the people who built the YouTube's popularity based on the little guy? Uh, I don't know if they lowered it or not. I, I I've been getting money from. I get about. 200 bucks a year i think from them you know and i i don't even know because they just deposit it in my account and then i i don't even notice it's there and then at the end of the year they send me a tax statement <laughs> you know? ouch well no they i have to report it as income i guess but um you know okay yeah yeah so uh, i don't know the news for me is I take a uh, uh, like a like a, a Motrin, I, ibuprofen type pill, but for prescription for my back mm -hmm. called Relevant. Mm -hmm. I've got to stop it Sunday because on Wednesday I'm having a colonoscopy. Oh yeah, well no, you have to oh, stop you. You have to because of blood. Right, right. Yeah. They, they want to make sure you don't bleed to death. Right, I get it. Right. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you know when I get a cut outside my body, it coagulates and stops bleeding. So yeah, yeah but, you but stop if you all if, kinds if, of stuff. Well, but uh, yeah, but you know, it probably they don't they don't like to take the chance. Okay, and I, I, don't I was told when I got my eyes done. Yeah. Uh, hmm. And uh, at least the, that's the last thing I remember. I remember they told me other times too. They told me <laughs> no, no ibuprofen or aspirin. 10 days before the yeah. operation. Right. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatories is the, the yeah. name of all those things. Right. Yep. Yeah. And they, they, they don't. They told me 10 days, and then I talked to the gastroenterologist and said I'll be, you know, limping around like a crow with a broken leg. What's, what, are you, what are you having? What kind of operation are you having? No operation. Uh, just the colonoscopy. Oh, colonoscopy. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, they, they're going to take me off the... He says you you need to be off it three days is fine. Okay. okay. Yeah, I think when I did it, they told me the same thing. Because uh, it it really is a a quality of life issue for me. And then, you know, and then being an anxious person, I'm like, okay, what are they going to find? I'm not having any problems. It's just a routine every ten year thing. So they're going to find polyps in there. They're going to be cancer. Who knows? Well, what, how old you know? are you now? Sixty two. And you got one ten years ago. Yes. And at that time, there were no polyps, right? One little polyp, no, it biopsied, no problem. Usually what they say is if you they even find anything, you should do it in, uh, again in three years to five years. Yeah, the, the, the uh, gastroenterologist said CN10. Okay, well, if that's what he said, then, you know. Yeah. Because I asked my doctor when he did, uh, oh, God, my door's open. Hold on a second. If I don't close this door and she hears me, I'm... You know, but I closed it and it opened up. There were ghosts in this house. Okay, anyway, where was I? Okay, so anyway. Talking about... Um, where were we? What were we talking about? Oh, yeah. Uh, my, my gastroenterologist told me, I said to him, 
Well, I said now, uh, how long if if you remove that polyp, and let's say tomorrow one grows and it becomes cancerous or whatever, uh, how long is it before it gets dangerous? And he said, oh, if I cleaned everything out and I didn't find anything in there, he said it'd be 10 years before anything serious would happen. Right. Yeah. That's so, a, that's it, you know, they, they're very slow growing, but yes. they, they're dangerous. Mm. They're deadly, you know. Sure, sure. And usually when they remove polyps and they go in for a colonoscopy, my understanding from the doctor, mm -hmm. is that it takes about 10 years for new polyps to grow back. Yeah, that's exactly. That's why they try and clean them well, out no, before it, it, the no, no, you can grow No, you can grow polyps within a three-year period, but they're small. You know, they're right. not, you know, they're non-cancerous or whatever. Right. No. All right. Well, I'm not too overly concerned. Yeah, so. yeah. It is. It's just a routine test, and so I would rather do it. I think, know, I, I think I'm beginning to want, uh, understand why nobody listens to this program or calls it. I don't know. Last it, year it was all medical about you. Well, so because this, I, this, was going, this, I was going through medical things. I know. Well, it's okay. You know. I didn't mind talking about it. I'm not, yeah. I don't talk about medical stuff all the time. I will tell you what happened to me last <clears throat> night. See this? That's not... Re really, uh, there. Well, there are cars moving down there. See, but what this is is a green screen, and what it is is if you do this, you see, right? Oh, I just ruined the magic, didn't I? Uh, no. But if I put up the green screen, there we go, right? No, so, I'm glad you explained that to me. I know you weren't explaining it to me. No, but anything that's green. If I place something else on there, it puts it in back of me, okay? Anything, right. If I wore a green shirt right now, my head would just be floating, all right? Well, that's kind of cool. Yeah. So anyway, so last night, uh, I'm running around here, and um, or maybe it was the night before, and I, I literally stub my toe on the green screen because it comes in this, it's in this big roll-up <clears throat> case, okay? And I didn't think anything of it. I think it was a today. Yeah, I think it was today. I, I woke up and my toe was hurting me. And it look, what happened was by stubbing my toe, I chipped off part of my toenail. I literally that. ripped it off. Oh, yep. And, that could hurt. Oh, yeah. I mean, I can't wear shoes or anything. So I'm having, I'm having trouble walking around today. So. Mm hmm see that's why we don't have listeners that's exactly that kind of discussion <laughs> here let me let me grab this here i have a, one item why don't you I show us the that other toe. day maybe more people um, be interested and, no, um if anybody wants me to over there also is all my blood work up if you want me to read it to you <laughs> um I, I i i got this uh item it was in the news and i thought i would pass it along to the rest of you and see sure. what you thought. This is good news for us, by the way, here on the program. Uh, the judge in a defamation lawsuit in Connecticut, that's your state, uh, Jeff, oh. against Alex Jones over the radio oh. and online video talk show host false comments <laughs> claiming the 2012 Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting in Newtown, Newtown uh, Connecticut was right. a hoax has ruled that Jones is liable for damages in the case. Huh. Connecticut Superior Court Judge Barbara Bellas found Jones in default for failing to produce documents ordered to be turned over to the plaintiff's parents and children killed in the shootings. The documents were centered around if and how Jones and InfoWars operation profited from spreading lies about Sandy Hook and other shootings. Jones was also recently found liable in Texas from uh, shootings, also due to the failure to comply with the court's orders. Jones's attorneys have claimed that they adequately complied with the order, but the judges have ruled otherwise in both Connecticut and Texas cases. Jury trials are scheduled for next year to determine what damages Jones will have to pay in addition to court costs. They found him li liable in Texas, huh? Yep. Yeah, really. That's even more stunning. <laughs> That's right. Doesn't he do his show out of Texas? 
Where, where's Info he? Wars. Yeah. Where's he? Where is he? Uh, That's uh, where he keeps his dog people. Don't you know that? Yeah. Where is he? Uh, you know. Is I don't know where the hell he is. Yeah. Uh, and what's he all about? Yeah, right? Yeah. So, anyway. So, it's uh, 1130. I'll keep going here because Kevin called. Um, oh, that was nice. Yeah. Thank you, Kevin. Well, well, you know, one more person called, so here I, I'll keep going. But, you know. It, and I always screw Kevin, you up with that, don't I? After tonight, yeah. I'm going to have to think about whether I'm going to do a show on any other night but Friday uh, and the Monday show that I already do. And the other thing I'm going to have to double think is whether that Friday show won't just be Kevin, Patrick Blazik, Josh Wheeler and myself. <laughs> so, you know. Um, so, uh, unless I start getting a little more participation yeah. here, folks, I mean, I'm going to have to just say that's, that's you know, I'm going to have to make it so that I don't get depressed three days a week, you know. I think what Jeff was saying was when he was talking about you advertising that he is a man of a lot of money and he was going to pay for the advertising. Oh, he's going to pay for the advertising. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. We ought to start a GoFundMe page for Alex. <laughs> you know? How much uh, am I going to have to... Uh... Well, I don't know. The GoFundMe page is free and they take a, a, a small percentage and we send it out to everybody on his Facebook profile and they send him money. Well, I was thinking about doing a podcast. You know, these podcasts are about true life stories about murders and yeah. intrigue and so on. And I was thinking of creating one and just creating a totally fictional story. Isn't that what life in the passing lane is? A tro true, a totally a podcast. Yeah. Uh, no, what I no that what are you saying? That's a totally fictional story. Oh, I thought. Yeah, I'm sorry, I missed that. No, no, it's a, it, it's non-fictional, but uh, at least I think it is. But no, isn't that a podcast? You know, about some grisly murder that happened. Oh, okay. Blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah. And I was, I, I'm going out and I'm investigating it. I'm going to find out who did the murder. There huh? you go, and you can ask Phil. You know. <laughs> so I can ask you about something uh, uh, coming in, in the future. Alex, did you get a call from your wife about going to visit you? What? Huh? <laughs> I knew this. Is... Did you get a call from your wife to me, me, say that my, my wife, Miss Marjorie, yeah, and Pam are coming to your house? No. <laughs> well, she did. What? She, I don't know if she told you, but she told Pam, well, don't, and Pam told me. Well, don't rely on my wife for anything that way. I mean, she probably yeah. forgot 10 minutes after the call was over. <laughs> I, I will ask her tomorrow. When are you coming yeah. in? I don't know. They, they don't tell me that. Oh, you I mean, just show up. <laughs> oh, you mean our That's wives normal. are like conspiring to have us all get together? Yeah. But they're not telling yeah. us when. Uh, they had never told us. So. Did she tell you when? Uh, some, yeah, something after uh, Thanksgiving. After Thanksgiving. Okay. Right. Fine. I think that. Yeah. <clears throat> Hello, Brian. Uh, Hello. Hello. Notice the great turnout? Yeah, I was driving frantically trying to get home before you killed the show. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we had a dinner. They they did some restructuring in my company, so my my boss is now a bigger boss, and she's uh, so yeah. So we had a little going. Wait, away your party. boss is now a bigger boss, but she's still your boss. No, there's going to be a new boss. Yeah, same as the old boss. They, and I, there's a song like boss. that. <laughs> hey, that's you know what? The, did I mention that before? The old CSI is back. You know the CSI Vegas. Yes. Uh, Grissom and stuff. Yeah, I yeah, love but, that. But no, but I here, love the original he, here's one. Here's the thing I don't get. Okay, <laughs> they call it CI, CSI Vegas. Mm -hmm. Originally, they just called it CSI, and it took place in Las Vegas. Right. So why don't they just call it like original CSI? 
<laughs> I don't know. You know? Yeah, that's the only one I liked. And so I, I like it again. It's, it's good if you've been watching Oh, it. they were getting down to like CSI Amarillo, CSI Fresno. Harlem. Yeah. Yeah. CSI yeah, really. in Harlem. Yeah. Well, the yeah. funny the funny thing is the CSI is just about in every police department everywhere. Mm -hmm. Of course, you don't see it on TV. Yeah. No, you have a C CSI is a, de de a department in the, uh, you know, it's like department. Department. And everything else. Yeah, I've been, uh, we, we got Netflix. I've had the Netflix bug, so I've been watching a bunch of documentaries and I've uh, been watching some car stuff, long series stuff. And we've been watching Cobra Kai, the kids and I. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So well, you know what's, so come, what's back now? Hmm. Tiger King. Oh yeah, I haven't seen that. I got to watch I don't that. understand how it can be back. He's in jail. Yeah. He's been uh -huh. in jail since the last one ended. Yeah, I saw two of them interviewed on uh, TMZ. Like one couple, I don't even know who they are because I didn't watch it yet. But um, yeah. Did you watch the original? No, I haven't seen anything. You yet. know what it they, was? They, they had the, the the guy, the couple. And they were taking away his uh, lions and tigers and stuff like that. Yeah. Because they, I guess, uh, somebody called and they said that they were mistreating them. And then they went and researched everything after they were taking the animals away and found out that he didn't. So they won the suit and they're getting the animals back or some crazy stuff like that. Well, what do you do with the animals in the meantime? No idea. That's a huge market in, in Texas. There's a guy who... Uh, built uh, my my friends built a couple cars for this guy. Really, really rich, and he deals with exotic animals in Texas. Got giraffes and and a whole bunch of animals. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, so they're doing another one of these Tiger King, and I'm going. Well, what are they going to do? I mean, it, it it makes no sense at all. Uh, you know. Plus, I mean, I guess they figure, hey, they did well the first time. They may as well do another one. But uh, you know, I just uh, uh, I sometimes I wish when they do these series they would just just do one run and that's it, you know, and don't do anything. Please don't do one that my wife likes because if she if she I got did I tell you about the time she started binge watching this Turkish Tur soap opera, Turkish drama, yeah. Turkish yeah uh, telenovela. And she watched 67 episodes, and then I pointed out to her that if she wanted to finish it, it was 167 episodes. And she finally gave up on it. Tiffany but, watches those Korean dramas nonstop. Oh, really? One in the morning in bed, I'm trying to sleep, she still watches this stuff. Well, uh, does she like Korean stuff? Yeah, they they have like drama after drama after drama. So she watches all. Well, yeah, she's all not those. Korean. She finds out about one good one and just watches it, nonstop. If she's not Korean. She's Vietnamese, right? Vietnamese, right? Yeah. yeah. Because if you like, if you're if you're Korean, uh, Squid Game. Oh yeah, we watched that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, but now they're gonna have another season, and it it was good, like you said, it was good as one season, and now they want to do another season, and it's like they did a whole complete thing. Now they're gonna drag it out, I think. So. Well, you know, a good show. If you get a chance, go over. Do you have Hulu? Yes. Go to Hulu. Watch Dope Sick. Dope Sick. Yeah, it's eight episodes. Depressing as hell. Oh, nice. But it's with uh, Michael Keaton, and it's all about the whole OxyContin thing oh, and wow. the Sackler family, and how they were selling this drug to America and cr literally created the worst one of the worst drug epidemics we've had in this country. Mm -hmm. And it's it, but they do it as a drama, and it's yeah. very good. It's very very good. Hmm. You know. Yeah, I have to watch that when I'm uh, drinking one night. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I mean, you know, I was talking about the fact that uh, podcasting has become a big just drag on the market. There's just too much of it, you know. Uh, and uh, I think the other thing is all these binge watch things, you know. I mean, you go over to Netflix. I told Marjorie, I said, why don't we subscribe to Netflix? She said, well, I watch a lot of things over there. And they're like these horrible, horrible, you know. 16 part dramas that she gets hooked on 
Mm-hmm. And and I said, there's really, if you look at this, not a hell of a lot on Netflix. <clears throat> you know, I actually think that for money, dollar for dollar, the best money you can spend is Disney Plus. You know, hmm. Disney Plus is very good. Do you have any of these, Jeff? Do you have you have you have, uh, you have Netflix? Do you have Netflix? No. You don't subscribe to Netflix. No. Nope. What? The, you, 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 well, Netflix. I mean, I have it on the system, but I think you got to pay for each one that you use. Oh. So I normally, I normally pass on. That's only in Connecticut. I subscribe like to. Else could be. It's an $8 Get this. Per subscription. I subscribe to Netflix. Then through Disney Plus, I subscribe to Disney Plus. ESPN Plus and Hulu, okay, and then I mm-hmm. subscribe uh, through my cable company. I get, of course, HBO Max and Showtime and Stars and Epics, okay, huh. and then I also subscribed because I was getting half off, so it comes out to four bucks a month. Paramount Plus because I like the Star Trek stuff. The new one just started. And also the fact that I can watch CBS Sunday Morning on there while CBS Sunday Morning is on and get the show without commercials. You know. So, I mean, it, it, uh, those are the, the... What else is... Do I have anything else? We, uh, yeah, that's about it. Yeah. But I got them all. Brian is probably the only person on the show that's not old enough for a colonoscopy. I do the well. No, I do the yearly thing. Yeah, the year, yearly channel. what? You stick your finger yeah. up your ass? What? What do you do yearly? Oh, they have the they have the little paper and you do that. You know, shit on that, and then you have the little thing and you gotta dip it in there and to the. Then you gotta put it in one package, put the foam around it, put it in another package, another envelope with the hazard sticker. Oh, you mean that the little duty in a box? You mean yeah? yeah. You mean that <laughs> poop in a box company, Colaguard? <laughs> Yeah, no, it's not color I mean, It's through Kaiser because my I don't have any of that in my history. My history is like uh, heart stuff. No, that's so. fine, but after fifty, you should. Eventually, get you'll have to do it. Hey, after fifty, no, I do the yearly. I do the yearly thing. No, but that's yeah, what but I. That, that, we're talking about the colonoscopy where you got to clean out and they run. Yeah, no, I don't. Yeah. And then you're good for ten years. No, I just do the yearly. But that's yeah. why I do this all the time because uh, my uh, my heart. You put that on your butt, do you? No, no sample from that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hello, Matt. How are you? Mistake. It's Matt from Seattle. <laughs> Hi, Matt. Hey, guys. Yeah. Alex, I, I heard your beacon of, of of help, and I'm here to save you. Yeah. Uh, oh, thank, thank you. I <laughs> yeah, it's 43 it. after, so you got 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, gee, I was trying to figure out how to call the program, but I figured if I get in the last 15 minutes, I don't have to talk much. No. <laughs> you know, but Alex, but you know, the funny thing is, it's like when you said you had cancer, you know, but you already, you know, you were going in for your cancer treatment, right? You already yeah. knew you're fine. You're just going through the treatment. Remember how many people thought you were like on death's bed and like, yeah, hundreds of people. I said, oh, sorry to hear. Hope you're doing well. But then nobody of those listened to the show at all. Yeah, right, right. Well, they probably thought I died of, of Maybe you just say that I'm frosting, very ill. Yes. These are my last shows. Yeah. <laughs> well, my shows are good. numbered. And then- as well, <laughs> if you looked at uh, your post about Bobby Slate, and I was just looking at there, and you got all these people. Oh, Bobby's going to be on. i got to watch that. i got to watch that. And nobody, nobody came on. Yeah, and hardly people, hardly anybody was watching it. Yeah, you know and what? Then, and then this one guy says that uh, what is the podcast addict app? Some guy said he watches the pod watches us on the podcast addict app, and there the ramble is over five hundred and sixty you know viewers, but on podcast podcast addict. Yeah, that's where he watches it, and he says there's over 560 people watching it all the time or listening to it, and uh, I've never heard you even mention that one. I've never heard of it. Well, I've heard of Podcast Addict, but I never ever uh, put in to have my show on Podcast Addict. Current subscriber number on it is the to the Ramble is 560. Oh, that's subscriber numbers. That's not how many people are listening. Well, subscriber numbers to the Ramble, I guess, so... 
Well, you know, uh, I've got... Maybe they uh, subscribe to Don't Listen. I don't know. I've got like uh, almost 2,000 people subscribing to the YouTube, you know. But wait yeah. a minute. Well, Hold on a second. I'll uh, we're, we're podcast addict. Let me see here. Pod yeah, for them. Cast. Oh, so we're, all, we're all addict. googling it right now at the same time. Tell them you're get. Tell them these are your last shows. You're at ill. You're at death's bed, and everybody will watch it. Podcast addict. Addict. I got. Do I need oh, to clean my attic? Podcast. So the ramble doesn't say anything. Okay. Podcast. Jesus Christ, McCarthy's been going on forever on here. Oh, who? What do you mean, McCarthy? Kevin McCarthy. Oh, is he's, he? He's yeah. screaming and yelling for the last half hour or so, maybe longer. Oh, let me see here. All Alex Bennett, uh, Life in the Passion Lane. Who are they? Yeah, here's Podcast Attic. Let me see here. Search Podcast Alex Bennett. Let me see. Yeah, here. yeah. Search your name Alex and you'll see Bennett. Okay. There we go. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Alex. There we go. Okay. Now I'm. I'm. I. Uh, okay. Boom. Okay. It's not doing it. It's not doing the search. The ramble. Where is it? Forty-seven results. Forty-seven. I can't even. Uh, I can't even get it to come up. I don't find an oh, app for it. The, there we go. Alex Bennett's Ramble video. Alex Bennett's Ramble. Gee, I must have put myself up for this at one point. I just never, you know. But uh, of 575 people, I think, are subscribed to it, if I'm not mistaken. But up, huh. up comes the socks that I buy. What is this? Let's see here. It doesn't, it doesn't say how many people are listening to it right now. Well, you can't tell because these are... These are shows. Once I post the shows, yeah, they yeah. they show up. Yeah, there. September eighth, two thousand twenty. Then it has five hundred seventy-five people listening to it. Wait a minute, two thousand twenty. Why isn't it done any more <laughs> recent than that? I don't know. So September twenty twenty, September fourth, twenty twenty, September second. Yeah, you know, but you know, this thing goes up every night. They should be getting it. Well, anyway, enough of that. Uh, 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 but you know, I mean, I just, I just wonder. Don't you, uh, hmm? don't you think it's just diluted? I mean, the the podcast has just been, it's just diluted the whole broadcasting, right? Because now everybody does it, and there, you can't tell any good. There's, there's, there's no measurement for anything that's good out there, right? Well, I mean, yeah. the thing is that you Anybody know, anybody with a microphone. If exactly. I knew how to publicize it, I could probably do pretty well. But I don't know how to. Uh, there's a whole paradigm and things you've got to do in order to get people to pay attention to it and mm -hmm. i uh i don't know i just don't uh you know i don't get it um we need to get somebody that's a facebook expert no i need to find what i need to find is a 14 year old who knows how to do this you know right. because when i see that and it's true that there's some girl out there who's got 2 million viewers or 3 million viewers and she's giving out, she's 14 years old and she's giving out makeup tips and she's got 3 million viewers. And you go, what am I doing wrong? I don't have a tight vagina? What? Can have him huh? give out makeup tips. Should I give makeup tips? Sure, why yeah, not? Yeah, you know something, but look at this face. Does this look like somebody could give up out good makeup tips? I don't think so. But I have good hints about eyeliner. Anyway, so. Hey, by the way, uh, 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 Matt, yep. you, you have, I noticed you have surround sound. Yes. <laughs> I, have a, I have a sound bar and then the remote speaker. Yeah, which, yeah. which sound bar do you have? Vizio. This one I just, I bought two of them. There's yeah, they're great, right? They're really good. One yeah. was two hundred. One was three hundred. I uh, yeah. I re I replaced. Oh, I he I heard you talking about that story. It was a Vizio. I replaced. Yeah, I replaced uh, both of my amplifiers and everything with this. You know, and I have very few few complaints about it. I think that some of the audio on some of the things you got to turn it on direct because you don't hear it right. 
But then if you put it on a movie and put it on a movie, man, the sound just yeah, immerses really great. you in it. It's really <laughs> terrific. It's, it's the best way to get a full surround sound system. Did you? Yeah, because the, the TV speakers are shit. Huh? <laughs> oh, the TV speakers are shit. But I used to have regular I Bose speakers and so on and so forth. This thing's so much better. Huh. Yeah, and relatively cheap. Yeah, relatively cheap, yeah. There's one... I, I, Hmm? I had a soundbar uh, a couple of years ago, and I paid 900 bucks for it because I thought I was getting the best, and it was a piece of junk. <laughs> I ended up getting rid of it. Well, the whole soundbar thing has improved you know, yeah. over the years. I have an old Samsung here in this room, and it's okay, you know, but it's not great. And, and then what they did is they came out with the soundbars that gave you surround sound without you having to have the back speakers. But then Vizio came out with a soundbar and a you know, what do you call it, a woofer. And then you plug those yeah. two surround sound speakers into the woofer, which is wire, you know, is Bluetooth from the front. So there are no wires. And I, I eliminated just a rat's nest of wires by putting yeah. in a sound bar. So. And the subwoofer really gives you some good vibration, you know, when you're watching a, an action movie or something. Oh, you yeah. Really get oh, that, no, that it's, it's, you know. Uh, yeah. You know what you think, though, sometimes when you have all that going on and you're in the center of it, you think that everybody in the neighborhood can hear you. But it's not really true because really right. you're isolated in this pod and outside of this pod, it isn't that loud, you know, but you're, yeah. you know, it's, it's it's fun. It's great. It's terrific. You, know. you get much noise. Uh, you're in an apartment. So do, do you get much noise from the people above you, you know, pouncing on your ceiling? No, because there's nobody above me. Oh, I'm on the top floor, so I stomp yes. a lot on the floor here to bother the people below me, you know. Smart. But no, yes. we're on the top floor. We have probably the best view of any apartment. There are probably three apartments in this building that have the view we have, and they're all on the eighth floor. Uh, there's us, there's the guy next to us, and then a person over on this side here. And they've got a good view because they got they got not only the view of the city, but they also have the other view of just you know Harlem and so on and so forth. But this is the this is this is the apartment with probably the best view in the whole building. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And when, uh, I, uh, when I was in Houston, I lived on the twenty third floor in this apartment for yeah. a while, and uh, it's all glamorous and everything. But what a pain in the ass! Getting groceries up and just the whole thing is. Well, did you have an elevator? I, you know. Yeah. There's an elevator, sure, but man, if you want to just go get a snack somewhere, it takes you 20 minutes just to get out the door. Because <laughs> you got to get in, and other people, you know, they stop you along the way. Well, uh, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't think about it that. It sucks. Yeah. yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, I've got the slow. It looks so glamorous in t on TV in the movies, but it's in practice. I, I practice. have an elevator that's so slow. That uh, there must be a joke there somewhere. How slow is it? I'm, I'm trying to think about <laughs> it. it. It's so slow. I, I don't really. How slow is it? Uh, it's slower than Tony. Wow. <laughs> That'll get him to call. <laughs> That'll get him to You're call. Gonna say, Fuck you again. <laughs> No, sound bars are really, uh, really a terrific way to solve the whole problem. I mean, I used to have an amplifier and the, the the speakers, and then the wires that went in the back, and the two speakers there, and the woofer subwoofers hooked up. I I got so many old subwoofers here. I think I'm gonna throw them all out. Hmm. You know. Let me ask you this: Am I the only one that watches movies in the dark? Probably. <laughs> I don't. Really? I don't know. It makes it feel like a theater. Yeah, but uh, see, here's the difference. In a theater, the light is hitting the screen and then bouncing back onto you. On TV, the light is coming from the TV set to you, and it's a different kind of of light. And so well, they've gone and spoiled it for me. Yeah, <laughs> you're better. Didn't your mom always tell you don't watch TV in the dark. <laughs> right. If, if you want to watch it kind of in the dark, put some lights behind the screen uh, and light those up. Oh, I do. I have a light strip back there. Yeah. Yeah, and that will make it easier on your eyes, all the way around. Right. You know. Right. Uh, but uh, that's that's uh, that's the main way. Um, 
I just, uh, you know, I always like to keep the, I, I, I keep the lights on. I mean, the lights are kind of dimmed because Marjorie doesn't like them. You know, there's a light in the bedroom, but it's a not strong light. And, uh, you know, no, I, uh, how many, anybody here watch In the Dark? No. No. Okay. <laughs> Don't knock it till you try it. Huh? Well, no. I'm, Don't I'm, knock it till you try it. Yes, uh, Jeff. I used to work in a place in uh, Manhattan. Yeah. And and they processed films. Yeah. And this is when, uh, on on uh, five o'clock, whatever the five o'clock news, they used to process the film because they used to take big old pictures of anything. Mm -hmm. This is before the internet and cell phones and all of that crap. <laughs> But they oh, had to actually process the film. And they would reprocess the film, and then they would bring it back to ABC or NBC or whoever that was and show it at 5.30. But the whole process <laughs> of processing the film was done completely in the black. And all these guys work blind. Well, no, actually, they don't work completely in the dark. You, in uh, in uh, uh, dark rooms, we used to call them, uh, yeah. you had a red light. Yeah. To, supplying yeah. you with light uh, so you could see things and so on. But, you know, that, but you couldn't have any light. That's the way things got developed in those days. Yeah. Yeah. Look, there's us. Hey, yeah. You're in the bizarro world. You're watching yourself, watching yourself. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, uh, and, and don't you look good with your screen mm. there. I thought you were going to point at a TV screen. There was going to be some TV show on, and then I would get thumped by YouTube for stealing video <laughs> from, from networks, you know. Ooh, right. But uh, here, go, here go the lights back on, okay? Uh, <laughs> what, do you, what do you do for lights? See, what, what I do for lights... Uh, you, you can't see it in here if I do it, but I'll, you can hear it. Uh, Echo, turn off office. And then all the lights go out. Did the light change slightly yeah. here? Yeah. Echo, turn on office. See? Okay. I, I have the same thing with the Google, and, uh, but it uses something called a Wemo. Do you use the Wemo switches? I don't know. No, don't know. no. But anyways, it kind of works like half the time it usually responds and says i don't know what you want well, I, can, I can turn on the light in the bedroom when marjorie's sleeping right now and drive her nuts yeah <laughs> you know uh but uh no this is it's it's a it's a i love echo and marjorie loves it too she just thinks it's terrific you know echo turn on pantry you know we use the word echo because a lot of people use alexa and we didn't we decided not to use alexa because if Marjorie said, hey, Alex, all the lights would go on. Yep. In the hey, Alex, turn me on. Then they would turn on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. When Marjorie screams that out. <laughs> hey, listen, you know, uh, as, as, as dismal as this started out, I thanked uh, Jeff and, and, uh, and Alan for being here and saving my ass. But I also thank for Kevin for joining, uh, uh, Brian for joining us, and then Kevin for joining us, or Kevin for joining us, and then Brian, and then Matt. And it made for a very nice little kind of talky little nice show. And yeah, uh, screw everybody yeah, else. Screw everybody else. The hell with them. Fuck all y'all. You know, <laughs> I can do this show by myself. After all, I have sex that way. Anyway, <laughs> uh, 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 Alan, thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate you calling. And Jeff, thank you for being here for a while. Mm. And then uh, uh, Kevin just saying, Hey, I really want to help my pal Al. Thank you. And then, of course, you then of course there was Brian who was breaking all traffic rules just yes. to get home so he could keep me from turning the show off. Thank yes. you. You're always a good friend, Brian. Good. And of course Matt, who uh, also likewise did the same thing, and uh, I, I love having you here. Anyway, everybody, give a big wave goodbye. I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. And then when I come back, watch, folks, I'll be out of sync. Okay, there we are. Well, it's not that bad. Anyway, let me uh, let me just get rid of these people. If I get rid of them, then I'm, I'll am i get more in sync, okay? Because once Zoom is not working anymore, 
Uh, I, I should get more into sync. Come on. Come on. I'm waiting to see if I get into sync at any point here. It's, it's slowly happening. It's slowly happening. Yeah. Yeah. Slowly I get to be in sync. Anyway, that's it. Hey, listen, Jack Bishop's back on tonight after being in the hospital for a couple of days. But he's well, he's good, he's raring to go. He missed all of you, so stick around for him. In the meantime, I'm Alex Bennett. We'll see you tomorrow night, 1030, same time, same station in life. And by the way, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, please get vaccinated. And if you don't, wear a mask. Do yourself a favor and everybody else. Good night, everybody. Bye.